the things that happened because of war. And I think that for the five McFerrin boys, we were all changed because of the war and changed for the better. great thing that happened to me and uh, to our division <clears throat> was General McAuliffe after Bastogne and the breakout of Bastogne and he was promoted and sent to us as our division commander. He was commander of the 103rd Infantry Division and was I mean, that, that made a, a lot of difference to us to have a man of that stature, that ability, what he had gone through. And the things that, he was very common. I mean, I think every soldier in the 103rd Division saw him. He was in their presence at one time or another because he spent a lot of time with the front line. There are not too many Good stories that happen about that, there are a lot of stories. But I suppose the most enjoyable one that I I had was the day we were climbing to Kleinbach was the first city and village in Germany. And we were in a task force. They took a regimental commander and certain units and just built a task force that attack. And Kleinbach was clear at the top of the hill. And you come down the valley, and there was, oh, about a foot and a half of snow on the ground. And as we come down to the valley, it was all open. And of course, there are Germans. We could see the Germans, they could see us. Once we heard all this rifle fire and all this small arm fire from both sides on our left, and it 
kept getting closer and closer and closer. We watched in here a big rabbit, a snowshoe rabbit, come hopping down between us. And I remember Colonel Blackshear was the commander of Task Force Blackshear. And here's all the doggies firing at this rabbit going by. Both Germans and Americans firing at the poor rabbit. And Colonel Blackshear, I can still see him standing in the middle of the road, swearing, kill the SOB. You're shooting at the wrong thing, things like that. And finally, after I don't know how many weapons fired at that poor rabbit, it rolled over dead. It was still as death. I suppose for 15 seconds. And the only thing you could hear was Colonel Blackshear. Because at that time the Germans started to move, retreat. And we all stood up and looked at the poor rabbit. And we had a big laugh after, afterwards, after the battle was over, after everything was over. That we all stopped and shot poor little soul going down to there. Or we should have been shooting a German. And there were things like that that happened that were humorous because of the situation. But most of the things that were happening, I won't. I don't want to talk about it. It did, it changed me. And it changed, maybe I grew up. When she got to the point to where she couldn't walk, she was using a walker. Hospice came, a lady from hospice we came and was involved and walked her through the house with her walker. And after Beth's passed, I had become acquainted with a number of people in the hospice, and I went and asked, and I volunteered to help. And they knew that I was hard of hearing, that I couldn't hear, and I told them I would only be good in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but in an environment that was not noisy, because if there's any, I can't hear. So that's what they did. And they sent me to, this, I don't want to say his name, this gentleman in, in Wayne County, not far from Dallas. And I went over to see him. And his daughter worked in a store in the village and I stopped to see her, talk to her. And she said, well, I'm glad you're here because she has spoken to hospice and asked him to come. And she said, but you won't get too much out of dad because he doesn't talk. So I thought, well, that's, I'm really not much of a talker. I wasn't. I thought it should be a quiet afternoon. And I went and they, the daughter worked and they had a, lady come in and sat with him and he was in a chair 
He was in a wheelchair, but he, while I was there, he never moved. He just sat in a wheelchair. And the lady that was watching him was with him said, if you're going to be a while, I've got some errands to run. I said, fine, if we're fine. If he needs anything, will he ask me? She said, I think that he will. So we sat there and looked at each other for a while. And uh, I asked him, I said, I think we're pretty close to the same age. I said, were you in the war? And he said, yes, I was. And for the next hour and a half, he talked and talked, we talked and talked and talked back and forth. And we started comparing where we were at given times. And I was on the left flank of the 7th Army in France. And this was during the Battle of the Bulge. And we were, the 3rd Army was the next, so our, my, our foxhole was the last foxhole on the 7th Army front. The next foxhole was from the 3rd Army. That was Patton's army. But he was up north, most of it, was fighting the battle of the ball. And we had to make contact at night. And what they had done is take so many out, the distance between foxholes was much greater than what it was at night before. But every night we had to make contact every so often with the next one to make sure that everything was all right. And in talking to this gentleman about where we were and the times we were, and comparing those dates, we may have crawled in to, toward each other's foxhole and made communication because he was on the right flank the third army, I was on the left flank of seven. We think, yes, we talk to each other. And we had, it was a good hour and a half that we talked and talked and talked. And the lady came back, was babysitting, or was sitting with him. And I said, well, I'll leave. When I left, I stopped downtown and talked to the daughter. And I said, I want to tell you, I said, I had one of the greatest afternoons I've had in talking with your father. She said, you talked to him? I said, we talked for an hour and a half. She said, what did he talk about? And I told her the thing. She says, I've never heard that. I've never heard that. And I was looking so forward to seeing him again. And that night I got a call from hospice. And he had passed away that afternoon after I left. And it, I don't know what I, I'd like to go like that and talking to someone that has been through something that no one else has been through. The things that we talked about, we were, we, you can't, you can't tell the way it was. You just know the feeling. You get that? We were, fun, one of the funniest things, you know, the oddest thing that we talked about. When we'd talk about something, we'd start to sniff. And we could smell the smells that we smelled at that time. I guess that's how <clears throat> intense that was. That was one of the finest things that have happened in my life 
the fact. And then when his daughter said, couldn't believe that he talked. I think that poor soul held it in all those years. He wouldn't talk to anyone about it. And I felt somewhat privileged that he made me feel special. <laughs>